So one of those big fancy you know, eight dollar words that you hear at the beginning of every computer science course is this idea of abstraction. Uh, all abstraction is doing is pretty much if we we think about it just for a second let's look at a, a function we've used already random dot random well I said and I taught you that random dot random is going to produce some number from 0 to 1 to 1.0 not including 1.0 how who cares oh yeah you can research it cool awesome good for you you researched it but for the purpose of my program I don't care how you do what you do. I don't care how random.random .random works. I don't care how random.int works. I don't care uh, if uh, math.pow chooses to do a multiplication double asterisk version or if it chooses to use a loop uh, to do its calculation. I don't care. I just understand I, all I need to know is this is the function that produces this effect. So one of those things we can do all of a sudden is I can start to break my functions down into smaller functions. This gets very weird, but this is kind of where that, uh, that abstraction comes into play. And this is where we call something called decomposition comes into play. We've talked about the idea of how do I eat an entire elephant. We, we break it down into smaller little chunks. And then from there, we're able to kind of digest things a little easier. So the same kind of concept comes into play. Let's think of it like this, for example. Let's even see a visualization going on here. I've got a method that we are calling. It's not going to let me do that. Yeah. I've got a method function here called square, and I've got something called sum of square. Both of these kind of work in tandem. Uh, as you can see, sum of square is calling square all over the place. So how does it kind of work? So if we go through our kind of process, and I visualize this for a second. So we start off, I've lo I'm loading square x into memory. That's exactly all it does. It skips over the rest of it, as you notice. I loaded some of square into memory. I don't care. I didn't do any of it. Uh, a, all of a sudden, is now equaling negative 5. That got loaded into memory. B has been loaded into memory. C has been loaded into memory. Now I'm going to calculate out a result. Result hasn't really been created in memory yet. All I've done is I've passed suddenly a, b, and c to sum of squares. In sum of squares, you notice that those parameters don't have to be the same variables. a, b, c, and x, y, z, for sum of squares purpose, I don't care what you were called outside of my function. For the purpose of being in my function, you are these variables. Now, yeah, this is, I apologize, I should have picked better wording, but now all of a sudden I'm going to go ahead and kind of rename them A and B and C. Remember, a scope dictates that those only exist inside of here, and I'm going to call suddenly square of x. So I go in, and well, that needs to get evaluated before I can go any further. So I go to square of x, I create y. I return y. You see that return value is appearing. Suddenly I'm going to see some variables get created in here. A just got created here. B does the same thing. It's squaring out x, returning 4, just got created here. C, going to that song and dance again. Boom. C exists. Now all I want to do is add 25 to 4 to 100. I'm going to return 129. That's what now result equals, and now I print it. And i got to scroll down a little bit for this, but as you can see, suddenly I can display these things, and this is sort of allowing me to you know, walk through my code just a little bit. If you're super curious about how to do this, this is through online Python tutor. Online Python tutor.